hello everybody another day another video and um, this time we're going to be talking about thermoplastics in millinery and excuse me for having hay fever so i'm even more sniffy and croaky than normal now we're going to talk about two different types of thermoplastic we're going to talk about fuss shape which is this one here and we're going to talk about wonderflex which is a stiff plastic material now the fuss shape is feels very fabricy, a bit like domet or fleece. It's quite soft, and it's easy to sew even when you've uh, heated it. So that's probably the one I use the most of, and the one I've got very little of to show you, but we'll still use it. And then we're going to talk about Wonderflex. This is just a scrap piece I'm showing you at the moment. It has two sides, one smooth and one with almost like a woven thread into it, which holds the plastic together. It is very stiff and you can't sew this on the machine. You can sew it by needle, but it's tough. And I'll show you later or tell you later how you can sew it if you need to, but it's more useful for sculptural things and theatrical headpieces and smallish items, I find. So we're going to be using a hat block for this and we also will be using a hot air gun. Now you can use a hairdryer, but it doesn't get hot enough. So it needs to be a hot air gun. And instead of using cling film or sarum wrap on your block, you need to use um, tin foil, aluminium foil, so it doesn't stick. Now I'm taking my piece of fuss shape and as I haven't got a lot, I'm just going to do a small fascinator or something similar. I must admit with these videos, I make it up as I go along, so I'm never too sure what I'm gonna make until it turns out at the end of the video but I'm sure you'll enjoy it all the same. So I cut my small piece that I'm going to use and I'm also going to have to cover my uh, cutting mat here because the hot air gun gets very hot. I don't want anything melting or bursting into flames. Be very careful when you use a hot air gun. So I'm going to find something to put on my mat first and I found a nice piece of plywood. So I'm going to use that today while I'm using the heat gun. And uh, I'm gonna get my block and my fuss shape <clears throat> and move the camera out a bit so you can see more of what I'm doing. So anyway, we've got our fuss shape on the block and we're gonna start heating it with the heat gun. Now I'm only gonna use the heat gun on the lower temperature don't have it on number two, you'll burn everything to smithereens. So what you need to do is work on very small patches at a time, moving quite rapidly. But you'll see as soon as you start to put heat on it, the uh, fuss shape starts to react. It will start to melt. So you push it down. That's it. Push it down over the block. So just to get it started. And then I'm going to put um, a pin in just to hold it in place while I carry on round to stop it falling off. So I heat another area quite rapidly moving all the time. Push it down, push it down onto the block. As you're doing this, you will feel the foss shape get stiffer. It will start to not feel so fluffy and fabric like. It will start to feel more plasticky. Now, of course, you can use this instead of buckram, and it is a fast way of making a base because you're not having to wait for buckram to dry. So um, it is quite useful. I don't use it as much as probably I could. So keep moving around the block in small areas, and as you go, pushing it down, pushing it down to the block so that you can pin it in place And once you've got pins sort of all the way round, you can really get to grips with it and start to heat it so that it will stay stiff and formed to the block. 
So again, moving around and again, small areas all the time. It does get hot and you keep your fingers out of the way unless you've got asbestos fingers because it can be a bit hard work <laughs> having burnt fingers as well. So keep moving the hot air gun over until it forms the shape you want it. With the FOSS shape, you can do quite complicated shapes if you need to. Um, but again, it's not a cheap product, so I don't use it perhaps as much as I could. So there we are. Once you've got a pin all the way around, you can really go over it and get it fairly stiff and down. Oh, burnt my fingers there. Um, <clears throat> now, if you overheat this, which I'm going to show you in a sec, if you overheat it, and if you keep the gun in one spot too long, you just melt it, and it just melts and forms holes and then becomes unworkable. So you've got to keep moving swiftly. But of course, you don't need so many pins for this as well, which is quite nice. And you don't tend to get folds with it. It stretches as you go. But I'll show you, if you overheat, it starts to curl in on itself. It starts to really melt and you start getting holes appear. So be careful. So there we have it, and it's put aside to cool. Now, it will take at least 10 minutes, really, to be cool enough for you to take it off the block. So don't, don't rush it. Wait until it has cooled right down and solidified again. It has cooled. You can take it off the block. Hopefully, it won't have stuck to your um, tinfoil. And you can see how it feels and you'll see it's kept its shape pretty pretty good so what i need now is to cut out um, a shape for me to make a hat from so i'm going to put it back on the block and use a pencil just to mark out um, a shape try and get it on the block the right way around <laughs> oh dear such fun as I say, I make it up as I go along, so um, I just look what what looks like a good shape. And I've got a bit of a teardrop edge there, so I think I'll make it a teardrop shape. And then you can cut it with dressmaking scissors, which is good. You haven't got to use any special tools. Or sharp scissors, I should say. So I cut my shape out. Now I'm doing it roughly for the video, but obviously um, I do go around and do it nicely and reshape it somewhat till I'm happy with it. Now because it's still a bit floppy, I'm going to blast the inside and get that nice and warm. And put it back on the block quickly and flatten it down and let it cool with the tinfoil there it cools quite quickly if you need to do it again do it again but again be careful not to overheat it but it does mean that the inside goes stiff because the inside won't have gone the stiff it'll still feel quite fluffy so a quick blast and it heats it from the inside as well So there it is, it's fairly stiff now. It won't get as stiff as buckram, but it'll be stiff enough to make a hat. So there we are. It's still a bit flexible, but it's fairly stiff. This comes in two um, weights, I think, 300 and 600 or something like that. And this is the lighter weight uh, foss shape. Now this is just a trick I'm going to show you that I'm not actually going to use, but might come in handy when you're doing something. Now if you wanted to attach some fabric to it, 
you can because if you heat it up again it melts the plastic slightly and it will stick the fabric to it now i'm using a piece of acrylic felt here because acrylic again is a form of plastic i think it's made out of plastic bottles or something i don't know anyway i'm going to cut um cut a shape to go on the inside just to show you this is another little sort of tip for, for using thermoplastics. This works with both of the plastics I'm going to show you. So, but I thought while I had this one here, I would do it. So, cut your shape out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat that piece of felt with the hot air gun and I'm going to heat the inside of the hat and just warm them both up so that they adhere to each other. So I'll put the felt inside and you can normally get quite a nice smooth finish if you poke and prod and whatnot and put it back on the block again just so that you keep the shape because every time you warm the plastic it, um, the foss shape or the wonder flakes it can deform again so there you are that's um, a quick tip not that I'm going to be using it on this hat but I was trying to show you tips while I went along so there we are and then you can cut it to to fit Now, I'm looking for some fabric to cover this with, and I found some scrap silk pieces that were quite nice and went together quite well, but I haven't got enough to cover the whole hat. So I've cut a piece of this sort of pale purple on the bias, and I've wet it, folded it under, and that'll be that piece of the hat. And again, for the tartan, I've done the same, tried to cut it on the bias or use it on the bias, and I've wet it and I'm putting it over this side of the hat. Now I'm using pins, but I'm not pinning to the hat. I'm pinning just below and on the block so that I can stretch the silk down. And whilst it's damp, it means it will stretch and form a better shape to the hat and I won't have so many wrinkles or pleats. So once it's been dried on the block, Cut the excess off. I'm just marking most of the large excess with um, a piece of chalk. Take the silk off. <clears throat> and as I say, just cut the excess round. And when you've cut it, you'll see that it does. It fits quite nicely. Now, I've wired... The edge of this and I've used a sewing machine to zigzag the wire to the hat um, <clears throat> and now I need to cover the wire so I'm using again bias binding opened out ironed and stretched around the hat stretch it as you go so it forms a nice tight fit and that's going to be sewn in place so that's been sewn on and I'm also attaching some elastic. So this is slightly thick, this elastic, but I am running out of my normal millinery elastic, but I thought this will do for this demo. Checking it fits on my head. And then a couple of knots and the elastics in place. 
Now, obviously, you don't have to use elastic. You can use a hairband or whatever. But if you're going to, I suggest you sew it to it now so that you don't have to sew through the top of the hat and into the fabric. Uh, there we have it. So now we're going to sew our fabric on. So put your first piece on, which is my purpley bit. Uh, about there will do nicely and then clip it all the way around don't try it and sew both pieces on at the same time it, it doesn't work if you if you're using two pieces like this two toning pieces so sew the first piece on and then the second and as you go around sewing you can pull it very tight and pull out all the little wrinkles and pleats and that sort of thing so you're going to be sewing that to the bias binding that we've put over the wire and there we have it it's now sewn it's nice and neat around the edges and it's sewn to the inside now i'm going to line this uh, but i'm not doing it now for the video and i've just done a quick uh, decoration for the top so that you can see a finished product so there we have it and I hope you've enjoyed that, because what we're going to do now is talk about Wonderflex, the real plastic plastic. And it is, it is very thick. So I make a lot of simple shapes with it, but it's quite good. It will stick to itself, so you can fold it, stick it, double it up. Um, I'll be using its own self-adhesive properties later when I put the decoration on. But for now, I'm going to cut some small pieces and I'm going to wrap them around my little wooden bowl that I found in a charity shop for 10p. And I just thought it was an interesting little bowl and it would make an interesting little hat. So we'll see. This will be its test. If it looks awful, I'll know not to use it again. <laughs> Whenever you block thermoplastics, you need something heat proof. You can't block them onto a polystyrene head. You can't block them onto a plate, something like that, because it will, the heat will just melt the polystyrene head or crack the plate or whatever. So you will need to use wood. If you use metal, the metal absorbs the heat and makes it a bit more difficult. So if possible, you really need to use it on wood. So when you heat Wonderflex, it does go very floppy. It goes really limp. So heat it up all over. Again, moving swiftly so that you're not keeping the heat in any one position. Get it just started so that you can see it starting to go floppy. And then push it down over your shape, whatever you're using, your block, your button block fascinator whatever so I'm just getting it started there and I'm going to heat it more so that it gets very floppy and I can then shape it properly around around this little bowl and you can see there it's starting to melt very nicely so then once it's quite soft you can push it over the edges you can squish it and squash it <laughs> it's a bit like working with hot play-doh <laughs> but you can keep on heating it and and melding it and making it look good and pushing out any lumps or wrinkles again if you heat it too much it will just over melt and you'll just end up with big holes or burnt and it just won't work so Again, it's best to use small blasts of the hot air gun, swift movements, and then squish as much as you can. If you squish too much, you start getting little holes. So again, be careful. It's best to take your time. This doesn't do quickly. This takes a while to do because you will need to be pressing and pushing and getting it all looking really as seamless as you can so I'm just going to keep on heating and folding 
and again mind your hands on this because it does get hot so you push and squeeze and squash I don't know why I chose this shape because it's going to be an absolute pig to get off the pole but you know I just I looked around the workroom and I thought what can I use oh, that looks interesting I haven't tried that little bowl out yet so here we are I like to make things difficult for myself And as you can, you can see how long it's taken me to do, although I'm speeding up the video, so you can imagine it took me a while to get this. You need to set it aside to dry, and it will take uh, at least 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes to dry. Now, getting it off is difficult, so try and cut off as much excess. It, it's not difficult if it's a simple shape, but as I said, I've gone and chosen a really peculiar shape. And then I've just realised that I'm using my dressmaking scissors, which is not a good idea. So <laughs> I looked for another pair of scissors. Here we are. Much better. Rubbish scissors. So cut off the excess and then force the shape off the bowl, which, as I say, is not easy. Um, but you can do it. There's a bit of perseverance and quite a bit of trimming. Keep all the little trimmings that you've taken off because you can reuse those you can melt them again use them on something else and we will be using some little scrap bits a bit later so then you try and get it off the bowl <laughs> i should have just done a fascinator on a on a little button block but there we are once it's off peel out your um tin foil now occasionally people say oh well run some vaseline or oil over the tin foil and it'll come out easier yes it will but then you can't paint the thermoplastic because it's covered in oil so i tried it once and never again so i just persevere with picking all the uh, tin foil out now what i'm going to do is trim the edge so that i have a nice nice trimmed edge Now I'm going to cut out some shapes for the top of my hat. So with another piece of Wonder Floats, I'm cutting out some uh, sort of feather type shapes. Normally I would be using up every scrap and keeping every scrap, but it's a bit difficult to show you on, on little tiny pieces. So I have cut um, off the roll here. So cut out your shapes and then you need to try and meld them to what you want so i'm going to cut probably two i think so heat them with your your heat gun again till they go floppy and you can wrap them around something so here i've just used a uh, roll of paper that was there it's not quite soft enough yet um make sure you, you put them on something that's hardly likely to stick although when i was wrapping this around it stuck to itself which isn't very good but uh, ooh, see there ooh, stuck to itself so i had to fiddle with it a bit and i'll have to cut a bit off there because it's gone misshapen so and then i'm going to cut another piece out and this time I'm going to do the slow method of shaping, which means you cut it out, you heat it with your gun till it's all floppy, and then you stand there like a lemon holding it until it's cool. There you are. Oh, that's the things I do. <laughs> so there we are. Right, so I've cut my shapes, my base has all been trimmed, and I've sanded the edges of the base, in case they were a bit rough. And now I'm going to attach these to the hat. And again, all I'm going to do is get them soft and floppy on the ends and stick them in place, because it will stick to itself. So you decide where everything's going on your hat, and then you stick it in place you will have to sort of hold it or prop it 
otherwise it's going to have a tendency to flop where it's still warm so take your time over it fiddle about and there's your hat now as I said you I'm going to spray paint these so I've spray painted the inside I've spray painted the outside and then I sprayed some gold on but I forgot to take a photo of that and now I need to Oh, I'm just going to show you something. You see, you can, this is where you can stick it to each other. You heat it up and you can roll it and stick it and it will form a tube or a flat piece or whatever. Now, this is how I do the handles on my teacups. So that would be a handle on my teacup. And the saucer is just on a small block and the cup is done on a small bowl anyway back to this one so I'm putting some elastic on and I'm heating some little scrap pieces which I'm melting and melting onto the plastic edge of the plastic and it will keep it all in place now if you wanted to sew a headband on the only way you can make holes in this stuff is to heat the end of a needle and poke it through to make a hole you can't sew it without making the holes first so if you heat the end of a needle and push it through the plastic you'll have made a hole where you can then stitch so for this I'm just gluing everything because this is the easiest way with this stuff now I want the edge to be comfortable and I also fancy a bit of a trim so I'm going to glue in some braid now I'm going to have it just over the edge so you can just see a bit of it and I'm using Fabri-Tac to glue it all in place. Fabri-Tac's brilliant. It st sticks anything to anything forever and ever. So I'm just going to put some braid in and just see that it's just over the edge of the hat. And a bit more glue to seal the ends and no uh, runs, whatever. And there you are. It's done. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you subscribe for more.